So I'd like to call to order the Cohasset School Committee meeting of April 2nd, 2014. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Onyabani is on the way. Um, President Paul Schubert. President Christina. President Halini. Welcome everybody, especially the young ones. President Mary McGoldrick. Okay. Um, Mary, would you like to join us and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I would love to. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so tonight what we're starting with, and I think I left my uh, name list over there. I'm going to have to grab it. Oh, okay. Thank you. So tonight we have uh, honoring us with their presence, I shall say, a very uh, happy group of readers who were part of the readathon. These were the ones who were challenged by the opportunity to read. I know that um, Mrs. Golder and Mrs. Stina went over and did reading in the classroom, and these are the students who are at home who won certificates for being the largest readers when the presentation came. So we invited all of them to come tonight. I know not everyone could be here, but we're going to have the ones that are here um, stand up and show you the minutes that they read. I'm going to read everybody's names, but you know what you folks can do for me? All of you students, when I read your name, if you'll stand up and hold your sheet up so the whole committee here can see how many minutes you've read, and then we're going to talk about how many hours that is afterward, because mm -hmm. it's amazing. I was so impressed when I was doing this, because I know I didn't read as much as you did when I was your age, and I am overwhelmed by how much you put forward. So in the kindergarten class, we start with Tobias Carpenter, and I know Tobias is here. Tobias, what are you facing towards us? Oh. Tobias read 2,625 minutes. Oh, Unbelievable. <laughs> And we have Timothy Dunneman. Timothy, come in tonight yet? Olivia Griffin. And Olivia, not only is showing her her numbers, Olivia, can we see how many minutes you read? Olivia read 895 minutes, and even better, today is Olivia's birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. And then we have uh, Owen Alirsic. And show us, Owen. 700 minutes Owen read. <laughs> and right beside him is Blake Marshall. Stand up, Blake. And then he read 2,732 minutes. <laughs> and I'm not sure if Max Phillips got in. I heard he's on his way. Max read 2,520 minutes. <laughs> I know Molly's here. Molly, why don't you stand up? And Molly read, Molly's already standing up. Molly read 1,080 minutes. And Shay Taylor, who's not here, read 570 minutes. And the, the whole kindergarten together uh, read 11,692 minutes. And then the challenge kept on moving because we have first graders here. I know Nathan Axtrar isn't here, but he read 1,017 minutes. And I know Jack is here. Jack Bowden is here, and he read 1,275 minutes. And James Giglio is here. Where's James? Oh, turn it around, James, so we can see it. Excellent. He read 1,045 <coughs> minutes. And is Charles Grudinskis uh, here? No. Charles read, he might go by Charlie, but he read 1,170 <laughs> minutes. Uh, Lila Jackson, who's not here? 1,320 minutes. Ella Lynch, 
read 1,485 minutes. And I know Aiden is here, Aiden Teriyaki, where are you? Oh, excellent, he read 3,575. And the whole first grade together read 10,887 minutes. Did everybody get, I'm not sure if we caught everybody, you're coming in, if we missed you, I'll kind of catch up with you. Uh, we have in second grade, Hannah Sharon, where's Hannah? Hannah, show your sign. She read 2,750. And then we have Krista Heinlein, who read 2,658 minutes. And we have Hannah Nichols, who read 2,497 minutes. And if I've already gone by your name, I'm going to come back to you, so don't worry. Uh, Dimitri Peters. Dimitri in here? Nope. Dimitri Peters read 1,460 minutes. And Mateo Reyes. Oh, Mateo. Mateo, hold it up for us. He read 1,398 minutes. And Catherine Ronzoni. Catherine read 2,265 minutes. And Ned Torrey, who's not here tonight, read 1,415 minutes. Maggie 
Steve Young, are you here tonight? Yes, I can't remember his names and faces. 5,616 minutes. And that added up. I couldn't, I thought I did something wrong with my calculator. That added up to 35,286 minutes.
last time. Yeah, that was great. Oh, I love going up there. I just never eight hours a day. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that was exciting. Very exciting. That was great. So to a little less boring. Yes. Um, they had a fast car yeah. so they get some sunlight out there. So, well. So a motion to approve the minutes of December 18th, 2013. <coughs> a motion to approve the minutes of December 18th, 2013. Is there a second? Yes. Oh. Any discussion? Hi. I have some, a couple of comments. Okay. <coughs> French exchange section. I couldn't find any reference to February or April. Do you know if they've determined when that might be? Because I didn't hear it. I've not heard any meeting. Yet. I can ask, but I haven't heard anything. Because I did listen to the meeting. It was nice and short. But I, I didn't hear them say it would be February or April to be determined. So maybe I missed it. What are we talking about? I backed up a couple of times. It was, it was in the, um, the packet he handed out. Oh, OK. So it wasn't in the discussion. It was, No, it was in the packet. Like, I saw the date there. So I Okay. What, do think? what are we talking about? The French exchange. Oh, right. There's a reference to February or April 2015, but we didn't discuss mm -hmm. the timeline. Also, the NEASC report, the, the um, paragraph on NEASC was very abbreviated, and I would have liked to have this section include a bit more info um, and maybe a synopsis of the results. It really doesn't address the results. I mean, the, re <coughs> the report is part of that. Part oh, of I that. understand that. I understand. So, and then, um, can I just ask you a question? Stepping back, do you want sure. me to verify over the French Tribune that was in the literature if they made a decision? Is that what you're also interested? Well, I'm just curious, but yeah. also, if it wasn't discussed in the meeting, it really doesn't belong in the minutes. No, the packet is attached, and we this is supposed it. to be our discussion points. That's all. You feel like it removed. That's yeah, we didn't you. discuss it, but I mean, kudos for reading through the literature, Jennifer. <laughs> I do give you credit for that. Um, but I think that this is supposed to be what we discussed in the meeting, this is all. So it was kind of odd for me to see the April week when we didn't really discuss it. No, we, we did vote on it, though, so I think that to remove it, we're going to remove the vote and we can't do that. All right, well, we can leave it as is. Maybe can we note in there that that was included in the packet of information on the trip? Right. That would be great. And um, then I just I have a reminder for the proposed visitation policy K1 through K, K I K I um, that we were going to I had mentioned that the policy doesn't address anything outside of normal school hours and after school building access should be looked at. So I hope we continually. <coughs> well, they just, just as a side note, they've installed the first um, lobby guard today in its entirety in the front of here. Thank goodness. So, <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, it's up and running, just so okay. you know. Great. Um, I, I've heard a concerned child wants to know if she's going to have to check in every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's installed the on the lobby, the lobby guard? guard. The lobby yes. guard. Uh, in every school? No, the first one's been fully installed here in the front office. Yeah, that's what so I thought. School. We'll work towards the other schools that this one's So, how does that work. affect us when we come to the school? Uh, I think it's more of a concern for s complete strangers, but when you're coming through, you'd want to wear a name tag so people in the school who don't know you realize that you are supposed to be here. Right. You'll have to scan your license when you come in here. That's it. That's and when it. did that start? Uh, well, I think it will start now. I think they just put it up today. Cool. We got an email that it's up in function. Maybe we should all come in for photo opportunity and scan our license. So we just have to scan our license. <laughs> That's the only thing we do is how it operates. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a window right beside it. If there's any problems, you can check in with the secretaries. Right. Okay. And then under communications, um, Mr. Milanowski was the acting town manager at the time that the budget planning group information was, oh, yeah. was done. <coughs> so that's it for now. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> so there a vote? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 No nays. Five nothing passed. Um, <coughs> next up is.
is uh, is the CDF with a potential banner. Um, yes, and, and I, I think um, Sister Kinsier tonight to talk about uh, potential banner and having a school, and because it would have advertising on the banner, it really is the purview of the committee to make a decision about that versus myself as the superintendent. So I think she's here to present tonight. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. So I'm here on behalf of the CF. Okay, two things. Um, sample banner and just what drives this. through a couple different mechanisms, as you know. One of the mechanisms is by running events, having one that's coming up on April 11th. We also um, do an annual appeal, um, which we mail the call, which is another fundraising mechanism. And then the third mechanism, which is one that we've underutilized in the past, is um, corporate sponsorships. Um, typically, we've had some corporate sponsors, but it's been a bit more tactical as it relates to um, having those corporate sponsors featured at a specific event, whether it's the spelling bee or the spring fundraiser. This year, we've taken an opportunity to kind of um, think a little bit more strategically about how we want to engage local businesses in a corporate sponsorship program. And what we've pulled together on this document is really just more for your information than anything else. We've um, pulled together a complete package of opportunities for those sponsors um, to be featured with the CEF. Um, and so it's a variety of things, including offering them um, uh, a space in the annual ad that we do in the Mariner. It's um, on our website. We'll include logos in our e-newsletter. Um, and we will continue to do what we've always done, which is feature them at our events. One of the things that we've developed this year um, for both events and other purposes is a banner. And the second sheet that I handed out is just a sample of what that banner is going to look like. Um, it's a four by six <coughs> banner, um, and it features the sponsors that have um, have donated to the CEF um, based on the levels that they're participating. Um, the ask from the, the <coughs> CEF is that we will we will use this banner um, around town, so we'll probably feature it at Pilgrim Bank, which has given us space in the past to um, advertise about the Class of Education Foundation. We'll use it at our events. Um, but in addition to that, we would like um, to have periodically some opportunities to show it at the schools. Um, for example, we often come to um, open house night um, and have a table like many of the other organizations <coughs> do. And um, we would like to be able to feature the banner, which talks um, obviously about the CF, but it also recognizes the sponsors. Um, in addition to something like having that banner at the open house night, um, we may think about perhaps having it periodically at um, Deer Hill or Osgood um, during a May Arts Night or a band concert, but it would be pretty limited in terms of what we're talking about at the specific schools. Um, our general plan is to use it around town <coughs> at events, but it would be nice to have some additional exposure at the schools. Is that clear in terms of what the ask is? Again, it's a banner that we will periodically display um, in the schools, um, but most of the time it will be around town. Um, I mean, it's quite common where you have five or C3 nonprofits in schools and various things. And there are other um, advertisers that are digital. You'll see it at Rockland, they have them in, in the baseball field and the, the back wall. Um, <coughs> I will just say from that point of view, it's a, it's a non-profit to point things out. Yep. Um, I will say I have a conflict of interest here only because I'm one of the sponsors on the list there. So I will not uh, vote on this, but um, we'll see that I am sponsored. It's part of the CF. <laughs> exactly. And I've been involved with it for yep. you know several years, so I, um, it does very good things. But I will recuse from the vote for that reason. So, and I am in the same situation mm -hmm. um, since BlackRock Development is on there. But <coughs> what I would like to see too is if if it's at um, Deer Hill for May Arts Night, that there be something along with it 
that maybe you could produce that just explains what the CEF has donated mm -hmm. to the Deer Hill? Yeah. Um, just because so, it ties things together, and obviously I was part of the CEF for eight years, so that's important to me too. Yeah. Um, I mean, it speaks as a standalone, but it's always good to get the message. Yeah, we'll speak about the nonprofit piece right. of it. Okay. I think it's a great idea. I, I don't have any problem with it at all. I don't think it's a conflict of interest either. I mean, I. And I've seen at various places where I've gone for my kids' sports events that a lot of school districts have advertisements from profit places. I think that it's it's great that we tell people who supports our schools. Great. So I'd ask for a uh, vote on um, <coughs> um, approving the um, banner for the CEF in the schools. I'll make a motion to approve um, displaying the CEF banner in the schools. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm not voting. Mary's not voting. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think there's a, the, uh, in, the uh, year gala is next the, Friday. The year, just a, just a <coughs> plug. <laughs> it's next Friday. <laughs> April 11th um, at Atlantica. Um, and for those who are interested, you can buy tickets online at um, cohazeducation.org. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We appreciate the support. All right, so the next thing on uh, my list tonight is the Atlas Rubicon, which is our curriculum mapping program that's being used throughout the district. And Ms. <coughs> Dean is our director of curriculum and instruction, professional development. She's come to give us an overview as to what we're doing with Atlas Rubicon, why we're doing it, and just give you a, a sense of what's happening. I'm sure she'll come back next year when there's further information, but at least for the moment, just give you some insight, shed some light on what we're doing this year, because we've devoted so much time to it. Good evening. Uh, if you wanted to know what the teachers are at the middle high school are doing today, <laughs> this is what they were working on. Uh, Deer Hill and Osgood also would love to have worked on this today, but they were working <coughs> on district determined measures, which also fills into this. But um, just so you have a hand up while I speak, this is sort of a, a visual of what will go on to that uh, PowerPoint. <coughs> Several years ago, my predecessor, if you remember, had an online curriculum begun, and it was rather difficult to maneuver and to assess, and it, it was it was not welcomed really by the staff. So um, my goal was to make something that was very user friendly and which followed the template that came from the state. The state had a particular um, format for developing curriculum using understanding by design, which meant that we, <coughs> we design curriculum with the end in mind and knowing what we are going to assess before we go forward. So knowing our destination before we took the, the trek really was the, the uh, goal. And prior to that, what we were doing was looking at the frameworks, that, which would be the Common Core today, and saying, OK, we're, how are we going to instruct this? This flips it on its head and says, what do we want students to know and be able to do? And how do these, uh, form, these curriculum uh, standards fit into it? So that was the difference in that. This is what our curriculum looked like prior. This is the most current that I found when I came in uh, the fourth grade social studies framework, 2004. Um, this is our document. And it's not to say that curriculum wasn't updated. It certainly was. Teachers were doing a wonderful job, but there was no solid here it is document for any teacher coming in. So it was a concern. This was also the kind of binder that was being produced. This was grade three science. Uh, very interesting. The earth was discovered then. Uh, <laughs> but they were huge and they sat on shelves and we dusted them off. And it, it's been the history of, of my time in education. What happened with Atlas Rubicon is I did some research within the first year and said, okay, we need something where it will be ours, it will be customized to what we want. It will be uh, easy for teachers to access. It will be a living document that we can consistently keep up to date. Uh, right now, the teachers are doing some somewhat mundane work. It means getting the curriculum into the format, into uh, the Atlas Rubicon, and then we'll move forward. 
So this year, our, our goal, district-wide, was to create a curriculum online using Common Core standards. Next year will be the new science standards that are in the process of acceptance and, and publication and distribution. And to constantly be able to change, move, and apply what we're doing. But Atlas Rubicon had some very specific things that uh, were very valuable to our cause. I worked with a wonderful person who was, I love the name, Parfait. <laughs> and he keeps saying, I said, Parfait is ice cream. And he said, no, it's really not. It's, it means perfect in French. So I guess uh, one interprets it for whatever. But um, Rubicon Atlas has been around for many years, which was the other selling point, selling point. And we worked together over a period of months to customize what the cohesive curriculum would, would serve and what we needed in all of the aspects that I really felt were necessary to move our curriculum forward to the 21st century. So there are three questions that teachers are asking and that I would have asked in, in embarking was why map the curriculum at all? And why have a curriculum that's already documented in textbooks? And why Atlas? So those are really the three questions that I'd like to address. Uh, the why comes with six big ideas with Rubicon. And the first one is that knowledge transfer. So it's all together in one place, and all teachers pre-K-12 can access it. Right now, Osgood is not on, on board. And the reason for that is there were so many things the teachers were doing at Osgood right now that were massive changes that I did not feel they were ready to just take on one more thing this year. It was really projected for next year. It was the same thing with Deer Hill. However, the teachers and uh, the principal said, why not us? So I said, okay, whatever. So we included it. It was a very great idea. It was a really good move. Uh, six to 12 needed. Um, review and it was a good time of common core and the teachers from what i found have embraced it they find it uh, rather easy to do we used a model of train the trainer in august we had someone fly out for the day and work with all the department chairs and the principals and the administration from the district to really explain the process the template okay it i had worked previously to looking at the template approving it tweaking it, working through it, uh, getting access, getting the teachers on board to sign in. Following that, the department chairs, as we started the academic year, worked with their individual departments and have been doing that since. At Deerville, we started a little bit differently. We chose two people from each grade level and did a training <coughs> training model also. And it was someone from every grade who became the facilitator it worked much better than getting everyone in a room and trying to get everyone on board that would have been very chaotic in this way. Um, <clears throat> it's really worked, and it continues. Hopefully next week, next year, we will have all this good online as well. The first one was to, to actually make everything in one place. The second one was to allow for interdisciplinary kinds of things to happen. There is a way to look at each curriculum and say, okay, this is done here, I'm doing this, this coincides with what you're doing. Things such as um, US history and American literature happen in the same year. This is this time period, I think I'll do this piece of literature then. And the history teacher can actually get on and look <coughs> at where this is happening within another curriculum. So it becomes very uh, interdisciplinary, integrated. It's also very transparent. Uh, all teachers in the dis district can look at any grade level, any content area, and any time period within the year to see what's going on where. It's the one form of communication that's probably been the most effective. It also allows for accountability. We've seen things that in collaboration. Collaboration has been probably the most important I've heard some very interesting discussions on, well, I don't use that piece of literature to teach that thing, but I do this at this point. So what do you think, what if we do? Or um, at Deerhill, I've seen teachers go in and say, you know, I use this particular format or this worksheet. Everything can be on there. All web, web pages, all videos, all assessments, everything is clearly uh, 
at the fingertips of anyone online. So teachers can take, tweet, do, supplement, look back, and it uh, alleviates a lot of the uh, duplication of things as well. And it allows everyone to see the big picture, which is probably the biggest aspect of the program. Bless you. Um, what it gives us as a district, and particularly on my end, I can look at uh, various aspects of the curriculum. I can actually go in and take a Common Core standard and find out every single place where that standard is addressed. I can also go in and find where is it assessed. If it's addressed but not assessed, I can go back and say, where do you know that students have mastered this? So that's hopefully our goal. So we know exactly what's happening where and what our students have mastered and what they have not uh, as far as instruction is concerned. Excuse me. And what yes. I think is really good about it is you can see where the holes are, especially when we go to the park. That uh, in the core curriculum, you're going to see, well, okay, there's a goal here. There's a, um, a skill. Where are we making sure that it's developed throughout the curriculum? And you can see it is. Yes. Once all of this is online, and the results from PARC or from MCAS come back, and we see there's a particular area that seems weak, I can go in, or teachers can go in coll uh, collaboratively, say, where is it that we address this, and why is it not embedded deeply into our curriculum, or why haven't students mastered this to the point of achieving better results? So it, it gives us a clear picture and, and a constant assessment of our curriculum. It also allows us to update it. It allows teachers to play on curriculum at 2 o'clock in the morning in the pajamas. So it, it can be reached at any point. Some of the staff have actually uh, taken vacation time and weekend time to work from home uh, to work on some of these units. And we put an, an average together. How long does it take to construct and put in a unit on a, on a particular amount of time, therefore the professional development points and the compensation is dealt with accordingly. So it's been very user friendly, very flexible, very accessible without driving many miles or friendly with staff who have children and need the quiet hours of the evening to work. Um, Mrs. Smith, yes. we have, how many people do we have students on homeschooling? Homeschool? Yeah, throughout the district. I don't know. Because this helps with that. Um, you know, we, uh, we haven't brought a uh, homeschooling curriculum uh, plan in, into the school committee's attention for quite a while. It's right. not supposed to be in the school committee. Okay. Because we used to. Right. It wasn't supposed to be. I didn't think, you know, I thought that was interesting. But we do yeah. have some homeschool people. But we can get you the exact number. I think it's around 10 right now. Yeah. And so what happens is with something like this, it plugs into it. Yes. Because you could, because we used to read the curriculum and it was hard to ascertain whether indeed they were meeting uh, all the curriculum uh, needs throughout the, the grades. And yes. this would really help. The other piece is many of our textbooks, <coughs> particularly at primary level, are already outlined in uh, essential questions, uh, curriculum, and understanding, but it isn't tailored to what we want and how we want to focus. So what happens with uh, putting this curriculum online is that we, we work with a backwards design. I've actually looked at some model curriculum uh, that the state has uh, published online and thought <coughs> we do it better. And other people have looked at it. We had a consultant in together today at Deerfield who said, I looked at it and I like yours better. So we are doing something very right in our conversation and, and looking at how we are developing our curriculum and putting it online. I've also found that there were uh, inconsistencies in teaching the same piece in two different levels and saying, this has already been taught. Let's take a look at it. And had some very rich discussions on how do we look at this and, and why is it different or is it documented the same way. So the uh, collaboration and the intellectual discussions around curriculum and how we teach children has been very rich as a result of this. Um, we start with the end in mind. Uh, what this has also done is uh, encouraged a number of people to take the online course with Teachers 21 on Understanding by Design. We also had a member of uh, an instructor from Teachers 21, which is a, an educational consultant and 
research firm come in for the day and work with department chairs for two days on what is a good curriculum and what is understanding by design and, and how do you know they're rich questions and how do we know that we're building rigor in our curriculum based on this format. So it's been a very rich experience for everyone and we're all learning this let's take the end in mind and what are we assessing and how do we get there. And very, uh, it, it's also very differentiated and it lists tiered instructions for teachers. That too has been an incredible discussion on what is it that's a change for teaching very learners and what is the difference between the needs of all students and the needs with struggling learners and what is the third tier where we have actual documentation that asks you to make changes for an even smaller group. So the discussion has been uh, great in how do we reach all learners through our instruction on any level. The format, looks, I'm sorry, can I just ask a question for, because I'm not familiar with what curriculum mapping looks at. Mm -hmm. How granular is this? Is, is it kind of a chapter or a unit approach in terms of curriculum mapping over the year? Is it? We're actually going online. Excellent. We're going to take a trip. <laughs> this document is available for all teachers. You have a copy. This is rather blurry. Uh, it just guides teachers into building curriculum. If I'm not sure, as a, an educator, a young educator, a veteran educator in a, a difficult unit, to say, OK, I'm not sure what I need to look at. What is an enduring understanding? This document is always a click away to say, this is what you're trying to build in your curriculum. What we ask is that we have essential questions. And the essential question is basically something that helps students to motivate and pay attention. Very typically, um, and you have the last one is actually a map that we'll, some teachers here have put together. This is a grade um, five mathematics. And it's, it's by no means, none of these are finished yet because we are still in, in year one. But the essential question that students continuously are, are addressing is how are whole numbers and decimals written, compared, and ordered? There is no concrete answer to that. It just is an inquisitive, life-related kind of question that comes back to motivate and help students pay attention to the details that will help them reach some kind of conclusion to that, that problem solving creatively. Uh, the other thing that teachers are, are now looking at is what is it I want students to retain <coughs> in the next two years, five years, ten years? What are the enduring understandings for what I'm teaching? And that's going to that very basic on what is my purpose for teaching this? Why is this important? And to answer any student who said, why do I need to know this? that it's there? And uh, some of these enduring understandings for this particular unit is that our number system is based on groups of 10. Whenever we get 10 in one place value, we move to the next greater place value. That's an enduring understanding that I need all students to know and master before I go on to the next thing. So it sets that real groundwork on what do I need them to know and master, and how do I need to assess that before I go on. It also allows for a drop-down menu that says Bloom's taxonomy is there. This is what we need. And we emphasize that we need those three higher order thinking skills of applying or synthesizing materials, and hopefully that even higher one of creating. And those are the higher pieces that add rigor to our, rigor to our curriculum. We also put all the assessments in, and there are two types, the formative that we test along the way. How do I know along the way while I'm teaching these kiddos that they're getting it? How do I know they're getting the pieces so that at the end, when I give that summative, that end result, that all students will be successful? And if they're not, then how do I go back and make sure that they are? So those are the kinds of discussions that we're having. The biggest pieces come at the end where there are interventions. And it gives teachers a list of, OK, what do I need to help students who don't get it right away? What is it that I need to give to, te to students who learn differently? who are more auditory, or who are more visual, or more kinesthetic learners, or who have to connect, or have repetition, or, or need help in taking notes. How do I do this for all students? That's their tier one. The tier two is, 
what about the students who need another revisit to this? And then ultimately, what do I do with students who have been diagnosed with specific needs? And how do I do that? So all of that is listed there, with the exception of the third one, because those are very individualized uh, learning plans. The other piece we have are resources that are given, both technology and otherwise. What do I use? This is where we can put videos, uh, PowerPoints, student discussions, articles, you're going to find that there's some very interesting pieces that teachers have already put on here. More. Basically, what, what Alice will do is take all of these and put it into what would normally be the cloud, but it isn't. It's, it's an online um, internet source. And we'll make it ever evolving and current. And that's really our aim. And ultimately, what will happen is we actually plan our curriculum. Then we implement our curriculum. We keep checking our curriculum, and we keep acting on it so that we are currently at the best quality that we can deliver. That's really the goal. Um, the, the website, let's access it. Let's hope we're going on a journey. <laughs> This is what the teacher would see, what I see. All of the staff is listed here, so here I am. And I have my own password. <coughs> what happens is I can go here and personalize things. And by personalizing, I can leave myself notes. I can leave documents that I want to use periodically over various units things that overlap. It's not a one-time document. This is what it looks like. There is nothing in my panel. However, the saved reports are many. Te these are documents teachers have saved in this short time. There's writing standards report. There's one for health. There's one for ELA. There's one for foreign language. The math people have stored documents here. Documents that can be used in various places by different teachers at different times. So it's, it's a very valuable piece. It's also, uh, I can also <coughs> leave a note for someone. If I happen to see uh, a communication, I want to talk to someone about it, I can do that. I can search a curriculum. I can look at standards. I can look at interventions. If I want to know what kind of interventions can I do, okay, I want to know that the strategy, the intervention, I want to know what's good for tier two. That kid who doesn't get it the first time needs a little bit of extra help or review. I can go to the grade and say, I don't know, let's see what they do in grade seven. I want to know what they do in math or help, that extra help. What can I use in my classroom that someone else has done? Here it is. I can look in. It's not very clear up there, I don't know why, but Introduction to algebra has a certain intervention strategy. What do they use? What have they used that's effective? They check in for understanding, or they do peer work. They integrate real life experiences. They do small group work. They use coaching model. So I have an abundance of ideas of what I can use in this unit to help. If I've not experienced something, I have a particular problem, I can go in and look. This is a collaboration. That means that uh, all seventh grade teachers have collaborated in building this. That means that if uh, Holly Sullivan is in and has built a curriculum, then uh, Amy, can, Amy Gallagher can go in and say, you know what, Amy, I did this, but I did it this way. And she can actually leave her a note. In the middle of the night, she's working this out and saying, here, 
I did this assessment and this work. How did you do this? So there's constant communication going on. I can develop a working template. This is where I build my curriculum. This is what you're saying, what happens when. The unit calendar gives us, this is one that I've developed, this is just trial and addition. So in September, I do from four weeks in September, it says trial, but it could be numbers or introduction. Then I do addition to 10 for two weeks in October. I decided this didn't work, so I want to move it over here because I need to do something else. I can do that to my map. But if I look at any of them, for example, uh, these have all been done. If I'm going to art major, for example, I know that still life drawing is taking place from mid-January to mid-March. And Nina can move it anywhere she wants. If I move it now, she'll be able to work there. <laughs> what happened to my curriculum? I don't think anybody had it. So um, this is her unit. It's a still life drawing. And her essential question is, how can you create illusion in space? That's one of her questions. What she wants students as a skill is they will learn how to create value with a graphic pencil. And students will learn how to create depth by observing and translating what they see onto paper. She hasn't put her interventions yet, or, into that, or you know, she hasn't finished. She's working in a different uh, piece. Teachers also have the option of working just on one piece of the map and then going back and filling things in. We're just in the process of stylistically setting up curriculum. So we have both what the units will look like over time and what the unit itself looks like. On my end, I can go to the reports and say, okay, I want to know what the scope and sequence is. I can look at it. I can look at vertical alignment, horizontal alignment. I can look at stands, standards analysis. I want to know where a certain standard is being addressed. I can also look at targeted assessments not assessed. So teachers have said that this unit covers this standard, this standard, this standard. I'm going in and asking the program to evaluate. If these standards are taught, where are they evaluated? And if they're not, then we can have a conversation. If not you, then who and when. So they're very rich conversations. The other piece that's very valuable is there is a teaching and learning piece in professional development the program always allows teachers to go in and learn. For example, there is one here on teaching English language learners, essential questions, what are they like? There is one on how do I work with special education learning differences, gifted and talented, dyslexic, sensory disabilities, speech and language problems, how do I address them, Down syndrome, uh, the, all of the society autism spectrum disorder for today. How are uh, there articles, there's research, there's helping me to address the needs of all my students. There is an abundance of a library here for any kind of need. There are also examples. There is a very interesting piece here that opens the world up to a teacher. This is their rule. Give me one, I'll give you many. So Atlas is saying, if you can give, as a teacher, if you can give me one quality unit of instruction and send it to our bank, I will open the bank for you and you can see everything, everybody else has contributed to that bank. So if I send one unit that I'm particularly proud of, let's say it's the still, uh, the pencil drawing, I send it to Atlas. Atlas will give me access to their entire library of anything for the duration which is a pretty remarkable. Any teacher can access three. After three, you're cut. I need something now. You can't just keep borrowing from the bank. So that's our program. And I, I'm extremely excited about it. I think most teachers have, unless they're lying to me, find it very useful, easy, easy friend, uh, user friendly. And we've just touched the top of this because it's a very long process. It's also going to be our goal for next year to continue the process of, right now we're just that mundane piece of putting in the curriculum. I have to give accolades to uh, Kathy Brooks, who 
took time and put the entire Envision math, grades three, four, and five, on Atlas. So now as they teach a unit, all the teachers are going in and, and putting in assessments, uh, added information, notes to one another. So now they're working with all what's already there. Uh, I have Deirdre, a question. Yes. Are all the teachers in, throughout the system um, you know, very comfortable in laptops? And because this is a laptop dependent computer. Yes. So they all have it, they bring it to school, and that's how they do it. Yes. So every not single one. Them. And they have <coughs> a computer through us, or they bring their own? Most, I think all teachers have laptops. Uh, yes. Most teachers have most laptops. Most teachers. General uh, ed teachers. I'm sorry. General ed teachers. General ed teachers. Well, some, some of the special ed teachers. And they belong to the school now? Yes. yes. They belong to the school? Correct. Yes. And they're um, MacBook Airs or MacBook It really doesn't <coughs> matter what teachers own right. or, or what desktop. They can use their own. They can, it, and they do. It's an online program. Yeah. So it really, right. they can go to the library. Uh, yeah, but it helps for them to bring yes. it to school. Right. The laptops have made things uh, much, much easier. Right. Because you can sit at home on your sofa and um, put things in. It's also a great way to, if uh, an educator is out for any period of time, that curriculum is there. Yeah. It's, it's available. And we can leave notes. Say, okay, I have left a number of notes going through the curriculum and said to people, um, have you tried this? Have you done this? Please look at this. You misspelled the word vocabulary. Yeah, that kind of thing. And it's just hypo. Yeah. One more question. Our older teachers who have been around for a while, not, well, it doesn't have to be our older ones, but are there some that need some professional development so they just have more access, uh, more comfortable with uh, laptops and stuff? The ones who have been around for 20 years? And we have years. been using computers for a while. So I know. They're, they're, it's not really foreign, but yeah. and we have everyone. a train the trainer model, which yeah. means that every department chair is very knowledgeable on the ins and outs right. of this program. And they have been <coughs> excellent at <coughs> sitting down with them. I've made myself available. The principals are very So they have enough professional development. Yes. Okay. And we've That's also all. brought people in. We will again next year. That's all. What's been the pickup uh, or what will what do you anticipate the pickup will be by by teachers? And are they required to use it? You know, what's oh yes, <laughs> we have we have sat together. We've sat we sat early in the year, and with the middle high school and the department chair said, "What's reasonable to get as a goal in June?" So what we decided collaboratively was uh, a certain number per teacher in every department. So making it a little bit more global, we said something like, "If a department has five people." and each person should be able to do two units, that's 10, but it's 10 for the department. So if you want to divvy it up and share it with someone else, that's fine, but your department is responsible for having 10 specific units completed in your discipline by June. How many, what's 10 out of percentage of how many total units would be? How many units they've gone to town? They've just gone crazy. I mean, um, um, if you're requiring, let's say 10 units to be mm -hmm. put up by June, what percentage of the year's curriculum is that? Um, I would say about 15%. 15%. Oh, yeah. So it's what's only two units. It's, right. fa well, it's far surpassed that. We put two units per person, per educator, but what I'm finding is they're working collaboratively, and that first one takes a long, a long time, time to put together. And once that first one is in, it, it's is there, skiing downhill. Makes sense. Is there a timeline to get to 100%? Next year. One year. The end of next year, I expect that our curriculum will be online and we will start in September. I am hoping to have someone in to look at what is quality. Let's go back and look at some of these and what is a quality piece, a unit. What uh, standards should we have? What is a solid understanding that we should expect? At this point, I should be going in and looking at the alignment. So I'm already doing some of that. Like I said, we gave, Deer Hill has only been online since January, and their entire English language arts is online. Their entire math is now online. They're looking and adding and changing and just playing with it. Okay. So they can do it yeah. very, very quickly. So just to be clear. Deer so Hill should uh, have science and social studies done also next year. And next year we mean June of 5th, 14th? 15, 15 or December yes. of, okay. 
It's not that we don't have the curriculum, it's that this makes curriculum qualitative. Right. Well, the thing, of, to me, the thing that's difficult about getting pickup on systems, any systems, are people have other ways of doing things, and the status quo is not so bad mm -hmm. in their minds. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a lot of pain in the, the status quo, mm -hmm. you don't change. Right. And so, or maybe the pain is the mandate that comes down from, that requires it to be done by June of 15. So um, if it's a priority and it's important, I think, I just want to stress that the milestones that you have to put in place to make sure mm -hmm. people pick it up yes. and the checkpoints along the way, because you don't want to find in June that only 30% of the curriculum is online. So if 15% is on by this June and you've got you know, another year to get the other 85%. Well, I've, I've downloaded yeah, as of January, because they're going home in February and working home, I wanted to make sure I knew what I already had so that I, I could gauge how long it takes to put a map together when they gave me timesheets. Uh, it's a four inch binder, and I need another one. So that, yeah. that tells yeah. they, they're really going ahead with this because it's my entire curriculum is at my fingertips. And it's the same template they have worked on before. It's not a new template. It's not anything they need to learn. A year before this came about, I had, we had given them this kind of template and said, if you're working on curriculum, you must use this. So this is not foreign. The template was not foreign. The technology was new. So there, was, there wasn't two things to learn. There was just one. Um, I haven't heard too many complaints. If there is a complaint that it seems tedious, it is. Right now, it is. Yeah, the old system was tedious. The other thing is, we've Doesn't done this before, will it go away? And I've said to them, it's been around 15 years. We purchased two years of a license as a security for them to say, it's not going away this year, it'll be here next year, and I expect that we will buy another license. And once it's there, you're not going to let it go as staff. They're going to require that it remains. It's not going away. It's the one thing I can assure them that as long as I have any kind of say, it is not going away. It is going to be here and growing and alive. Um, one of the things I love about this concept is that if so if something different comes out, as you said, as a result of the park, or there's we move from the Common Core someday to something else, you can look at everything globally and say, we need to change things here, 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 and here. Right. Which is just you don't have to redo the, the other thing page. that's happened, and the reason why this is timely <coughs> is in September we needed to have smart goals for everybody. We needed a new teacher evaluation. We need teacher uh, district determined measures. We needed this, 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 and this. Well, and when we sat as a, as a leadership team, we tossed this around for a long time and said, "Okay, look, if we build curriculum, we have it all covered. Right. We have assessment covered. We have goals covered. We right. have everything." right here and it has proven that it definitely does cover everything. And makes everything easier. So it's it's eased yeah. some of the stress that we felt yeah. staff would have. So this replaces the old fashioned lesson plan. I mean in kind of in my it way. Could. Yeah. I, you know the most units. people yeah. Mo uh, this would you know in the olden days when I was trained as a teacher you had to do these freaking lesson plans. And then if you had to change them it was a big deal. And you had to get them approved in the whole nine yards. Yes. Here everything's on computer and you're right, if something else comes up, you just <coughs> adapt it. Correct. We have some amazing, amazing pieces. I don't see where people would need a lesson plan. This is pretty much like giving you uh, a lesson this plan. This would lead to lesson plans. Correct. Some more the use. lesson plan would be the how-to, mm -hmm. which would be you know spelled out a little bit in your essential questions and your procedures. And, and you talked about it in here when you gave the example of the math. Is there a way to go, let's say, online, let's say you have a class that's <coughs> taught somewhere in a district somewhere in California, and it's an interesting lesson plan or <coughs> class, to basically download that as a... I believe I donated one. Philippe, you wrote a really good <laughs> lesson plan. Correct. <laughs> and the other thing is you have, you, we really do need to look at you have to share. the quality of what we download, but yes. This is video no, production. <laughs> along the lines of the, um, <coughs> I forgot the, um, Made it need a trademark on uh, the lesson. Uh, guy. Mm -hmm. guy. Khan Academy? Khan Academy. Khan Academy, yes. There are lesson plates here that are Khan Academy, yes. They're flexible. Mm -hmm. 
lesson plans that can be yes. largely downloaded or right. adapted to your own lesson plan in the right. school, and you can modify what's there to your own class. Um, I think that would be remarkable if you can just adapt it to that. Or you may have a lesson plan that <coughs> needs to be either adapted or changed or modified or expanded, mm -hmm. and then you can take your lesson plan and expand it without you know a lot of you know, <coughs> rigmarole and a lot of input from the, you know. Was, was the directive uh, from the department heads for the, so all the departments are working collaboratively, collaboratively on this? Yes. Okay. Anyone who teaches the same grade level in the same course must work collaboratively. Uh, there are singletons. <laughs> this is one of them. Um, this is uh, electronic studio. I mean, but what's happened in uh, the skill base is some of the things that have been added are very easy. A teacher can actually plug in. This is a student sample, and it's topographic illustration of a parrot. And it's a sample that the teacher, rather than keep an entire closet full, takes the snapshot shot and keeps it. Now, I can give access to students from home. If I really want to send this, I can. I now have it electronically. There is any number of possibilities. If I really want them to understand what I want them to do, I can plug in my computer and say, this is somewhat of what I'm looking for. Hmm. And if that's not uh, something that you can do, then start looking closer and see how that, you know, how this was done. Um, there are also articles that can be found here. Um, Adam has done a nice job about putting particular articles that he would like students to read. He can actually uh, put it up on, on a, a whiteboard or a, on any uh, projector and actually go through the article and say, this is what this looks like, or this is what this looks like. It's not so much putting what's <coughs> in the book up online, it's adding to it, making it rich, and sharing with everyone. So I said when um, the middle school was looking at a math textbook, I said the directive was look at Deer Hill. It's all online. Look at what they do in grade three, four, and five. See if that flows in. Is there a good alignment? And they did. They spent a day. They checked out some of the, the pieces. And they've come up with, we need to go with this publisher and this book because. So it, it's been a great, a great boom. I know I can go on forever. Well, it's very yes. exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Would you like her to come back next year and maybe give an update? That would be great. I would love to. Actually, next year, and, and I was hoping to do that this year. It's just a little bit early for them, but I think the teachers themselves would like to show what they've done with it. Director's So the next thing on my report is the next thing on my report is just to give you an update on where we are with the director of student services. Uh, at this point, because of timing, Mrs. Deems is going to lead the interviews. We had a very small number of <coughs> resumes come in. Nonetheless, there's some, you know, it looks like there could be some very quality people. It will be a very short window of what we need to do in terms of interview. We'll be assembling a uh, committee very shortly in the next few days. We'll be sending out some notices to folks to be a part of that committee, just to give you an idea. Uh, and then we'll update you again as we know anything else. We're looking at a target week for doing interviews and then follow-ups after that to see if there's any uh, potential candidates. If we find there is no potential candidate, then we will turn around and seek a, somebody under a critical shortage waiver to come in. And I have two people who are eligible for that. But we can't hire them because uh, they're retired directors. And we also would just go to the critical shortage waiver. We have to do a full search first, in fairness. Um, where did you advertise for this? Did you just school spring and mass up and mass up? Yeah, the school um, spring we have from across the country. Okay, and if if you interview these people and you find that none of them are suitable, would you consider going out and doing another another ad? Not at this time of the year. I, I would recommend to the committee that you do a critical shortage waiver for one year and then go out and advertise next November and start early. 
I really would. Because at this point, folks are not going to leave their jobs this late in the season. And if they are leaving their jobs, it might be because their uh, contracts might have been discontinued. So I wouldn't recommend it. A lot of districts are seeking critical shortage waivers because they've had failed searches so far. Uh, the critical shortage, the person can stay for one year only? One year only, and then you have to reopen your search anyway. Okay. So that's why I would say go and be on the early end of next year and bring some, you know, get a larger pool. The pool is under 10. And of the number that came in, there's a hearty number not even certified. So we can't interview them. So, um, so I would recommend doing it on the search this time of the year. I would recommend, because at this point, July 1st would be around the corner anyway. I would recommend mm -hmm. a, uh, some, an interim, a retired SPED director who could come in for a year keep the house moving forward and then do an earlier search next November or December and start early. So, but I did want the committee to know what was going on in case you should receive any phone calls from anybody, at least you'll have an idea of where we're at and you won't feel that, you know, you have to say, I don't know, I'll have to check and get back to you. We want you to be aware. Also on your list, I'm looking for my little notes here. I handed out a calendar to you today because there's a number of things I have to share with you about some dates that we have on our calendars that we're looking to do some changes, but they do require a vote from you. <coughs> Excuse me. So one of the things that we discovered as we were looking at our calendar uh, recently is the fact that we have an early release date coming up on May 14th, and that is an MCAS day in the district. And because it is a day we're giving MCAS, it's not fair to the students. Since we can't carry it over the next day, it's not fair to the students to say it on a half day, sorry, you're not done, you need to leave. So what we would like to do is change the professional day from May 14th to May 30th, which will not interfere with any kind of testing. But before we do that, we know that that requires a, a vote on the part of the school committee. So there's two dates I need to talk to you about moving, but that's the first of them. So presently, we have a half-day release on May 14th, and I am asking the committee if they would vote to move that to Friday, May 30th, which we chose that day because it will um, it was just the most convenient day for not interfering with testing. How do teachers feel about it? Well, I sent a note to Patty, but at this point, we're so limited by the number of days that uh, because of MCAS and because of PARC and other dates that we're really confined to a very sh few number of days. And is that prior, to, is, is all the AP, t test, uh, bleh, AP testing done at that point? Right? Yes, the AP testing is the week of, I believe, May 12th. <coughs> yeah, I make a motion to switch the professional development day from uh, May 14th to May 3rd. Second. May 2014. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, back on February 5th, we had a half day, an early release day, but we have a snow day, and we need to make that up still. So we met and we del deliberated what would probably still allow the teachers to be doing work that's productive for the system, especially because we're still working on the curriculum mapping. And we looked at the calendar as to when the possibility would be that we would get out of school and presently, excuse me, presently, provided we have no more school days, I'm waiting till that, at least the next meeting, uh, we would be getting out on Monday, June 23rd. And so we were looking and asking the committee if we could move that half day we missed in February to Friday, June 20th. But that would also require a vote on your part. When is school supposed to end now? 23rd. 23rd. <laughs> One of the driving thoughts was the classes are hot at that point. It would allow the kids to go home at midway mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah, I make a motion to um, make up the February 5th Professional Development Day on June 20th, 2014. Second. I'll second. Thank Any you. Any discussion? Yes. Is this the 23rd of half day? Yes, it normally would be. There's no lunches served that day. All right, so that we, 
Um, so June, June, tw sorry, June 23rd is already a half day? Yeah, it's the last day of school. Oh, it's a half day. Okay. I don't know. Is this, maybe you can't even do this, but is it possible to take the professional day from the afternoon of the 20th to the morning of the 23rd? And no, I have to be in the day of school. Oh. Day. I have to have the kids okay. there. Okay. Kids have to be there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's how it all is. It would be logical. Yes. <laughs> but then we have to have the kids come back on the 24th. Right. But then we can't do We're trying to avoid that. Yeah. Right, well, that's what I'm at. Yeah, that's a good question. Anyway, so we're going. So, all, uh, any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No more Thank you. And then I, I did notify Patty that we were changing the days, and I also notified Ted Carroll for those folks that use RISE right. so that they would be aware of a change in their schedule. <coughs> all right. Um, Excuse me. Um, could I request that you notify the families in town now? Yeah. So that they you know, they, they understand. Ashley, I asked on. yes, and I asked Ted Carroll not to notify anybody until you took a vote so that it was affirmative. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that's not a problem at all. Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna second that. I think that just yeah. to yeah, I, I said to keep it quiet till we vote. <coughs> right. Just wanna make maybe sure. explain that there was a professional day scheduled in February that didn't happen. So in order to have the teachers able to enjoy some more professional development time, we've moved it. And yeah. I'll do that on my weekend blackboard connect message. All right, and then the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the last thing that involves the calendar, um, if you notice after the May PD calendar, I asked for changing the date. Uh, we have a school committee meeting scheduled on June 18th, and uh, I will not be in town. I'm taking my first vacation in eight years, and I'm asking Committee, if they would be willing to move it to the 25th, because I'll be back in on Monday, the 23rd. So that was again a committee decision. That's all. Okay. We would have to take a vote for that. Yeah. Okay. So I make a mm -hmm. motion to. Yeah, I, I don't know my schedule, but I think I'm sorry. Time for me to change call if I have to. Okay. Is that enough time? I, I think so, yeah. Okay. 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 So I'll make is there a motion, motion to uh, yeah. change the school committee meeting from the right. June 18th to I'll June 25th? I'll make a motion to change the June school committee meeting of the 18th of June to the 25th of June. Any discussion? 2004. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? No? Okay. No in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? Five minutes? Okay. Thank so it'll be the 25th. Mm -hmm. My kids will thank you. <laughs> right. I'll let my folder here. The next thing I have on here is a park update. <coughs> so some things will be sending out. You um, do the take in and pass it around. It might be a I'm just sitting on the back. Have my, well, no, there's only one, but I think I have double coffee on the back. Yes. So, <coughs> so this is something we'll be getting out for parents, 10 things parents should know about the park test that is coming up. We are doing the park test in the, in the uh, community. We were one of the chosen districts. It is being given in grade three, and it's being given in grade seven, and it's only two classes that were selected. Um, the third grade will be during the week of May 27th. The seventh grade will be during the week of May 19th. We'll be sending parents specific dates. Again, it's one of those things that if a parent calls you and says, have you heard about the park? I don't want you to feel unprepared. We want you to know that we are taking care of things on our end. But one of the questions that has been coming up lately, <coughs> what weeks was that again? The grade, the grade, grade three is the week of May 27th. Yes, in grade seven. And grade seven is the week of May 19th. Okay, thanks. And with, with the changing of the professional day, it would be the 27th, 28th, or 29th is the testing days? It, it won't matter in that case because you only get 90 minutes. Oh. It's a one hour test and it only allows you for an additional 50 minutes, so we would be done so today. Have to, would matter. Unlike the MCAS, which allows you to have it the whole day, that comes to a halt. So, a couple of things that I did want the committee to be aware of, though because we heard from the commissioner this week that uh, some of the parents in the state are thinking that there's an opt-out op option for the test that they can 
opt out of having their child participate. And the commissioner sent a letter out uh, to another school committee that had promoted that, as well as to all of the superintendents, letting us know that there is no opt out option. The test is the test, and it's there for a purpose. Um, so, in case you should get a call from a parent that says, I understand there's an opt out option, yeah. there is not. And we wanted to let you know that. I think it's only fair. The park transition plan and two year pilot program, I'm just reading something from the commissioner. Uh, two year pilot period provide a small group of students early exposure to the new sy assessment system without holding these students personally accountable for the results. Uh, instead, the results will inform the board in its policy decision and will provide the board and department with the best possible information upon which to evaluate the accuracy, validity, and fairness of questions proposed for a new system of statewide assessment and to make refinements to the assessment as needed. Therefore, students must participate in the park field test. And did you say that the, the students are not held accountable? They're, so They're not, during the, not during the piloting. Once they move it over past the piloting after two years, it will be mandatory and it will come. So for this year, well, well, it's this just is a part test. Of pilot and we're in a pilot mode. We're in a pilot mode right now. Yeah, it's almost like the SAT questions that are right. used just to, to test the test. <coughs> yeah, yeah. and Duxbury is also one of the selections. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Any idea why they only selected grade three and grade seven? I'm just curious. Well, they'd actually selected grade 10 for us, but they took out they took us out because they were at the end of the year. Some places are mid-year and end of the year. We were only end of the year, and it was for algebra, and our algebra ended in January, which means right. the kids would have gone five months and then taken a test, so they removed us yeah. from the 10th grade. It is so random. Some people have two grades. Some people have three grades. Uh, some people have multiple schools because we're a small district. We didn't have that happen. And the number of districts that have pulled out, the, the situation, of course, is that so many states have pulled out of the park uh, test at this point. There's a very small pool now involved. Okay. So we're keeping our eye on what is happening, but we did want to keep you as a committee informed, and then we'll be sending a letter out to parents shortly. Yeah, this is one of the problems where you have a new standardized test where you have to right. try to look at what the testing process, is it valid or not? <coughs> Yes. You have to try to get a, you know, a relatively good statistical profile of students, districts, and you know, regions, and that's what they're Yes, and they're doing all kinds of uploads to us nightly, even on the weekends, Saturday night and Sunday night, 10 o'clock at night, they're sending us uploads to disperse to the staff. I am not saying anything to the staff on Saturday <laughs> night. I'm sorry. I draw the line. And, the, you know, some of this is Department of Education and the yes. federal government right. as well as state, so this is not just... This is a, a, a broader way to look at it. I think Massachusetts was chosen by the Department of Education because of the, that's we do all of them. But we we have a lot of standardized tests that are already part of their understanding of the adequate tests. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting that that was the criteria for removing tenth grade because for years I've been hearing parent <coughs> complaints about how by the time MCAS rolls around, not MCAS. Um, SATs roll around. Our kids haven't had math, some of them, for a year. So it, it, there's a feeling among parents here that that impacts their SAT scores. So it's interesting that they pulled us out of that pool. Well, we had to apply. They didn't just pull us. We went forward and asked them to remove us, and they did. But the, uh, there are only two districts with block scheduling who have been chosen to participate. There are more districts with block scheduling, but only two that have been chosen to participate. So. They had to tweak some things for us, and they're looking at the folks, the block scheduling, what the impact will be down the line as well. So we're sort of a, you know, a testing ground for them. And we are, again, we're receiving uh, constant documentation. For instance, Brock didn't have the test. One in four students were not able to access the test through the computers, and it had nothing to do with Brock didn't. It had to do with the company producing the test. Oh. So that just gives you an idea. They're really, there's a lot of, uh, Cakes they're working on. Yeah, no, Brockton's a pretty progressive it school district. Kind of it, um, it faltered. It, it was really, sp they sputtered through it, yeah. one in four, four and it had nothing to do with the district. I mean, this is why they're probably taking two years to implement it. Yes. Well. Yes, implement Saturday it. night I got a download of things that we should be looking at for tweaking. Sounds good. Uh -huh. Looking at four. Yeah. It's good that we're being For talking. clarification, did yeah. you say just that? A, just to identify yourself? Uh, Diane. Um, Clarification, did you say that there are no accommodations for the park? No, I didn't say that. OK, 
But you said there was no time accommodation. They, they will not do all day limits any longer. It okay. is, uh, that's what you're referencing. Yeah, you only get an additional 50%, so 90 minutes. Okay. That's it. Now, that doesn't mean in two years after doing all the piloting, they change how they're doing that for, for the moment. Okay. And um, what states is Massachusetts being compared with? What other states are being given the pause? This is Davis, we could carry. Oh, uh, <laughs> it says 15 In states. In alphabetical order, put a buzzer. <laughs> I'm not oh, sure there's 15 states. left. It's basically 14 states. Tennessee, Delaware are the two that I know of. There are others. There's 13 other states. There's 14. New Mexico. <laughs> New York. Uh, in New England, it's New York, Massachusetts right now. Um, most of the other states are smarter balanced. So I want to say 14 states remain in park. Uh, it was very high originally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So that's higher than I thought. I thought I heard there were just two other states. Two in New England. No, I thought I heard it was just New <coughs> Oh, no. No, no. no. 14 <laughs> states also have a pop. That was the concern. <laughs> yeah. I just I have would one be, more question okay. about, um, so you said it's two a two-year trial? Yes. So we'll do the same third and seven next year also? We don't know. But, we'll, but we will be a test site next year. We also. don't know. They won't tell us next year yet. They just, they're just doing this year only. That's how they do it. Yeah, I can't answer that. That's how they What I can answer for you, if particularly in grade 10, which is a big, big concern, is grade 10 until 2018 will be taking the MCATs. There will be no change. That we do know. And that's because it would be very unfair to test grade 10 in, a te in something that has not been part of their curricular uh, experience. Uh -huh. So that's the one thing we do know. Uh, whether we have PARC next year or MCAS is still in discussion as to will there be a choice or not. So that's the discussion. Yeah, we have to get our um, work for Katie Dugan, 100 Block Road. Um, just one um, comment more than anything else. I mean, I, I consider myself pretty plugged in, and I had no visibility on PARC coming down the pipe until this year. So I think that. For the majority of parents, there's maybe a consciousness that um, MCAS may be leaving us, but no understanding of timelines or what the replacement is. So whatever letter is sent out, it would be helpful to kind of, again, set the groundwork as to um, why this is happening, what the timeline looks like during a two-year trial or pilot period. Again, I was, you know, this was something that kind of came on up radar screen at least at the Deerville School Council this year, and I was on Osgood last year, and it wasn't discussed, so it's. It wasn't discussed with us either last year. Yeah. <laughs> no, and so I think, I think there's just a bigger education piece that has to happen with all the parents in the district right. around this transition. Um, <coughs> obviously, there's going to be some parents who are going to be more aware of it because their children are going to be guinea pigs this year. Yes. But I think that that's a continued update that we're going to have to do, and obviously, we'll try and yep. understand. The next thing to understand is Osgood is not involved. <laughs> well, yeah, no, so, well, that's true. Right. So there would not be that discussion at Osgood. Yeah. Right. What's, the, what's the, his, the history or idea behind it? Is it also that it replace MCAS? Yes. And yes. Are there yes. equivalents yes. across the country? Well, it, it's an <laughs> assessment of the Common Core curriculum. Right. Okay. It's all about the Common Core. So it, it's a different way to assess a different way of instructing. Mm -hmm. So rather than the MCAS, which is 17, 17 years, years old, old now, right. it's very dated. It is three this passage to answer the question. So there's the no game. real uh, sequential inquiry to the, to the questions. Mm -hmm. So what Park has done in the assessment is assess what we're asking the Common Core to address. So when we look at, do we call it Park? do we call it MCAS, it's really semantics. What we're doing is assessing the Common Core as opposed to assessing the old frameworks. If I remember correctly, when you came before us, and I think it might have been in the fall or, or the winter, we were talking about the park. We were finding that kids were getting to college and having to take remedial classes before they could begin their college work. So they were, in fact, not ready. Not ready. Um, and so this is a different way of yes. assessing more critical thinking skills and yes, things right. like that. What, what the MCAS was asking, what is the main idea of this article? What does this sentence mean? <coughs> what Park is asking is, what is the central thought of this paragraph? 
That's question one. Question two is how do you know? So that's the difference. That's that more critical, deeper kind of thinking that's being assessed. Whether we call it park, you call it anything else, it, it really is just a name that we say we are now assessing a different set of standards. Yeah, they have the, um, the states that involve <coughs> Arizona, Arkansas, yeah. Colorado, District of Columbia, and also the state, Illinois, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee. Okay. Indiana has dropped. <laughs> has dropped both Common Core and Park. Yeah, not so Rhode Island. Are they seceding? Yeah. Uh, they can just drop it. It says Rhode Island. This they have is, to go to the legislature. In order to drop it, they have to go to the legislature. It's a big deal. They're local. I mean, the state's legislature. Then they just decide. The state just decides that we don't want to be part of it. The federal mandate. Yes. Will Correct. it happen in Massachusetts? Not likely. <laughs> <laughs> not well, it's surprising the state could trump We're the federal. We're number one. Oh. Yeah, they're allowing it to happen. Well, okay, I mean, this, is, this on. is a pilot study. You know, once if the pilot study goes through, then the federal government will demand it. Okay. Correct. So it, as of now, it's a field study. Interesting. Yeah. And guys, the reason why we have the core, I mean, we're not keeping up with the rest of the, like, the high-performing countries in this world. We have to go, like what uh, Mrs. Stevens said, into synthesizing learning. I mean, especially in math. As we know from Envision Map, it's all about understanding what you're doing, not memorizing everything, things like that. So it takes it to the synthesis level of understanding, which sometimes that was just for kids in honors classes or whatever like this. Now this is for everybody. It's a mandate for <coughs> everyone, every student who graduates or who passes this, you know, uh, part should be able to synthesize to get to that level, that high, le high level, you know, uh, if, in order to pass, which to me, it should have been happening a long time ago. Well, they, you know, the, the, but the international standards, Massachusetts is ranked. You know, Correct. Four, so. <coughs> well, for us, it shouldn't be a big deal because we've already had, you know, pretty much, right, Mrs. Well, we have We've been, uh, align with the Common Core in Massachusetts in a lot of ways for a long, a long time. And our school district in particular has been pretty good district. But you know, certain things are going to be different, like when you teach certain things. You know? Common Core, um, actually, our Common Core uh, was modeled after Massachusetts. Exactly. Frameworks. So it shouldn't be as hard for Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, the, the, the federal government is looking at Massachusetts as one of the role models for right. for education. healthcare, for education, well, for, for baseball. I'll, I'll go. With, I'll go with public <laughs> schools for now. Leave out the healthcare. I was just going to comment that in terms of communicating with parents, I think that one of your better tools after the superintendent sends out the Blackboard Connect is probably your school councils and DSO on your right. principal calendar. That's okay. what people actually, right. you know, are going to be reminded and read. And and then parents will be receiving a letter of the students who have been chosen. Yeah, so. And those students were chosen at random. We didn't really, we couldn't do any picking. Yeah. They just came in and said, we'll do third grade, we'll pick the class. We had to upload the students and they had random pick them. So. Sorry, just one last point. Parents will never learn the results None because they're well. generic. We don't see anything from this round. Okay. It's a teaching, it's a, you know, it's, it's a data 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 testing exercise. company. Exactly. It's really they just have to figure out also rel so reliability, yes. validity, right. all those things that I'm trained to have to do as a psychologist, you know, when we have to learn how to construct tests. You have to do a sample like this, you have to do trial in order to make sure that the test makes sense. We can find out that some items uh, don't have reliability or internal validity. So there, that's a problem. And so they're going to, they, uh, to make the, the test make sense, they have to have, have Lots of data. testing, right. right, before you do anything like that, especially in academics and, and a lot of other areas, in psychology, in terms of mental health, all those things have to be going through what this is going through, yes. to be valid and internally reliable. Okay. All right, so I, next on the list is the uh, capital budget update. So. Uh, we just want to give you an, uh, an update as to what has been happening last night. The Capital Committee did meet. I know that um, Mary Boldrick was there. And 
you were there longer than I was there because I was at the National Honor <laughs> Society first and came down at 8.30 and we were still there at 11. But uh, <laughs> it was a rich discussion. It was very rich. In the end, one of the items that was discussed and you know, we had brought to the Capital Committee were our bus situation. Last night, the Capital Committee went through the proposed plans. Uh, one of the members had done a five option worksheet looking at cost effect for purchasing, purchasing all buses, not purchasing all buses, timing them out, doing a lease, doing a three year lease, renewing the lease, and so forth. Really? And when they got done with their deliberations last night, the Capital Committee voted to recommend to the Advisory Committee that we lease our buses. Uh, beginning in the fall, that we lease seven buses this fall because we just purchased one. And then at the end of three years, we lease eight buses to replace the one that we just bought. Instead of buying that we bought. And, and the source of the funds? Years. Well, they would be, they'd have to figure out a funding source for us. They would initiate the first lease for us. Is they it by definition capital things shouldn't be leased? That was part of the conversation yep, as right. well. Part of the conversation. Interesting. <laughs> and they I'm decided only reviewing. Who was the one that came up with the study? Who did the study on this? Well, I think they Dave all did. Yeah, Dave presented. Well, I presented great. No, but who oh, presented wow. the study on the leasing versus the whole a member of the capital budget committee? Capital budget committee. But that's public knowledge. I just want yeah. to know. Yeah. Who yeah. Was I think it was Brian. 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 Okay. Brian. Okay. 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 And, okay. and just if, if you don't mind if I add, the kind of the main driver for the for the um, thought of leasing as opposed to, to buying and owning our buses, even if you did turn them over every three to four years when the maintenance costs go up, is that the town is, we're not really set up to maintain our buses properly. There's not a garage to fix them. There's, and David just, and I have been working on this for years. Yeah. Um, so it, it um, in a lot of ways, seems like a more logical way to approach it. And I think it, it sounded like they were amenable to, if after the first three years, you know, there's something we didn't think of that comes up, they were certainly willing to work with us and figure out how to go forward after that. And that was the question. Is this common, David, in other school districts to lease? Um, some school districts do it. Uh, Hingham leases all their buses. Um, Have we been in communication with them to find out how mm -hmm. it goes? Yeah, I, yeah, I've talked to them on a, on a couple of occasions. But they, but they have a full service lease. They lease um, their maintenance also. So when they lease the, bu the bus, it includes all the maintenance fees too. That's not what we're, we're going to do? Well, the first three years of maintenance well, is pretty minimal. Well, the first three so years because of the way we, the committee wanted us to lease it. A lot of it would be part of the warranty service for the first three years, so there wouldn't be too much maintenance to, to perform. There would be some. Um, they, you know, you have to follow their guidelines, but a lot of different things. So it's more expensive to do the whole team stuff. It, it is, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we didn't have a comparison of doing it in way versus just leasing it? We did, yeah. 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 We, we showed that comparison. And the, uh, the, their way they thought was more economical for us to absorb the, the after three year type of deal. But we're going to well, well, their, their idea is to roll them over after three years. Got so it. you have a three-year three warranty, Got like it. a bumper to bumper warranty, and then Got in three it. years you're going to get a new bus with Got the same it. type of warranty. Got so it. Got hopefully it. that um, doesn't cost us a lot of maintenance. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thought Unless we get a lemon. <coughs> the thought was that the maintenance <laughs> cost would be yeah, much lower. Exactly. What? Yeah. yeah. The, the thought was maintenance cost would be lower. The lemon question is a big concern for yeah. me. Yeah, right. I mean, if we're leasing seven buses that are all the same, Make, model, whatever. Then we're in, we will we will own any kind of warranty issue that goes wrong with those buses. Where does the warranty service have to be performed? I mean, we're we, we going to be taking buses back and forth. Well, there's some That's questions we have to ask. Question yeah. we raised. Yeah. yeah. And where, then where, where would the warranty service be performed? And then right. if we have two buses that are out of service, what the heck? <laughs> and that was discussed well, at one point. You know, I mean, who knows what the details will look like? But obviously. I mean, in a, in a vacuum, a leasing solution is great. We're getting new buses every three years. They're being maintained by others. Uh, if, if they are like uh, you would hope, you get a replacement bus, just like you get a loaner car when you lease your car from the dealer. I mean, if the devil in the details all works yeah. out, right. it's is a it Cadillac solution, but it's extremely, I would think it's extremely right. expensive. Right. Yeah. And the source and the have to, you know, we have to go out to bid and follow the 30B laws leasing buses, so you know those are the type of things we would put in the bid, that we would need those. a bus if, if one of these other, you know, one of the buses the was out of service. 
Has Hingham been having loaner buses? They do, yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. One, one of the things I'll comment that I, I said last night, and I know Mary heard, is that they originally had said would we come up with a, a busing plan that we would stick to. And I said, we do come up with busing plans we stick to, but based on where the market is and the receipts in the town, the town isn't always able to fulfill what our plan is. And they'll ask us to step back a year, and then the next year they ask us to step back again, and then we're completely out of sync. And we've then we're we've chasing. We've presented many plans. Yeah, over we're the years chasing the bus that. situation. So I said to them whether it's a lease or it's a buy, we still need a commitment. You know, in three years, are, you, are we going to be there to make sure we have new buses again? That's a concern. And the last thing is, it still has to go to advisory. We do not know what advisory will do or how they'll see it versus how. The capital committee, sorry. My, what I said to the capital committee is, I just want safe buses for the kids. That's my primary goal. And we won't be changing anything as far as drivers. We will still retain our we own drivers. We own our own drivers. Yes, yeah, correct. Okay, because correct. that would be another yeah. huge, huge I have project. I have the analysis that Brian put together with Dane's information and, and the superintendent's information, and I can certainly share that so you can okay. see how they evaluated everything, because I'm sure they'll be bringing that to advisory next yeah. Tuesday. So, or whenever they're going. It's, right. it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, it's tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Yeah. You're right. And so, David, you reviewed the map on it, and it, it's... I haven't, I haven't seen the analysis. Yeah, I would like David to review oh. it. <laughs> I mean, That's to me, the bottom line is we have four buses that are in critical shape right now. Right. I don't want it coming to a stop, and the bus keeps going while the wheels stay put, or vice versa. So I said to them, my bottom line is safety for the students. Their job is to figure out what's the most feasible outcome for us to be able to have that option. Right. And then I left it with way. them, and they will take it to advisory. My goal is provided I still operate. I can get to advisory tomorrow and hear what they decide, and we'll let you know, unless you come yourself. One last question I thought I had was, uh, how long would the process, once the decision's made at least, let's say, how long does it take to run the RFP? Well, and the Find we have to get town meeting approval first. That's the next that's step. You can't do okay. anything until, until that. Yeah. Do anything so that's the day it would start. And start. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice to have the new buses ready, September. running by August 1st. <coughs> right, so, so that we're ready for school. Yeah. To run it. Right. And actually access the capital until July 1st. So yeah. Yeah. Right, so it would get approved theoretically on April 28th, but none but of we can you can, we do, can start you can do the all process. the prep work, but right, you couldn't right. actually access the funds until yeah. July 1st, yeah. but you could do a lot of work in May. Right. right. Once the money's But we so also, we I, uh, you know, I've already done some bid documents for the committee, the capital budget, to, to see, you know, a draft. And in the draft was um, the first payment wouldn't be made until September 1st. Perfect. So uh, the, the, the annual, the the annual right. lease payment. So we would receive the bus August 1st, and then the payment would be made 30 days after. Hopefully, you know, everything goes well. Right. I mean, once the, once the monies are allocated to town meeting, you can execute any plans or any yeah. RFP. Did you give me a cumbersome? <laughs> <laughs> I guess in the perfect world, I'd like to do, I personally would like to do a trial where we did half the buses, at least half the right. buses, see how the plan goes so that we're not quite so out there and Yeah, committed. we talked about that, too. too. Um, What's the plan right, for the buses so that are being taken out of service? Because they're not worth anything to anyone. <coughs> so we may be okay to have them taken away. Well, we'll have to try to solve them. I mean, we don't have room, room to keep them. Right. Either, so no I've seen some buses uh, in Costa Rica from the South Shore. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was one of the towns last night. Aline is going to want to take this to Costa Rica. You want to pay for that, <laughs> that freighter? <laughs> no, they, somebody must have paid for them. I mean, they yeah. did. I mean, we'll have you, to try to sell them. If you, get, if you want to come get the bus or ship it there, we'll give it to you. Scrap. Yeah. I mean, it was really weird going to Costa Rica and seeing a boat. I won't mention we're on the South Shore. You know that, but they did—they didn't even change that <laughs> South Shore town. <laughs> and I said, "Wait a second, I'm from Costa Rica here. That, that's that town is not far from where I live." Well, and I well, just rubbed my the, eye. If this plan doesn't work the way people think that it should, then at the end of those three years, we're on the hook for seven buses. We know. And that's, that's we brought that right. up too. Yeah. So but I, but I that, think you that's would, an issue. You would probably have an idea as the, I mean, I don't think it would work swimmingly for three years and all of a sudden crash and burn. I think you'd have an idea 
a year or two yeah, into it that this was not the plan and you'd have to set the stage yeah. for capital and advisory that, mm -hmm. you know. Well, they did say they wouldn't leave us hanging out to dry, so they let's did. hope they try. They, again, last it's night. Yes. I mean, I'm, I, do have, I, I do have concerns about maintenance. You know, sometimes the buses, even new bus, Correct. get stuck out on a, you know, an athletic trip or something right. and then right. when you, you know, what are we going to do? Yeah. Right. What, you know, what's going to happen? We, are, we still need maintenance. We need yeah. local right. maintenance. Yeah. Side assistance, loaner car, maintenance, everything you need in a, <laughs> in a good lease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Parents. Well, you have, you have students right. on the bus, what, you know, you right. can yeah, you you wait for another bus to get there. You have to do that no matter if you lease it or buy it. David, I still yeah, think we have, that we need you know, to we get have for that. somebody yeah. on staff that right. is right there. Right. But we don't you know, have a garage. I think we still need that. Yes. We don't have a garage. That would be the option that would go away. Correct. I don't know how that would look. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't imagine because there's there's maintenance that needs to be performed locally yeah. in order for us to honor the warranty. Right, there is like you know the oil changes. Yep. And the but they might what do the town vehicles do? It. Where do they get I don't maintenance? We have choice. Where do the town vehicles? I don't know. I think they send them out. So, uh, A highway. Uh, the highway does their own no, they trucks. Do their own. They do their own trucks, but trucks I think it's twenty-five years old. Sends their, their vehicles out. Is that, this is a town for a town school thing. I that, I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if we got together with the town and came up with a plan for town vehicles and our vehicles, it would make sense that we could work together and come up with something. But it was interesting because they were talking at the capital meeting that they're not able to, for example, lease the police vehicles. That's not an option. So I don't think they look at it as apples, apples yeah. across the board anyway. Right. right. But even police vehicles need to be maintained. Right. They can't right. be leased. So where are all these vehicles that belong to the town being maintained? Robin's garage. Yeah. Outside, outside. And that's expensive. That Eddie used man. to say he looked at the budgets from all these right. departments when he was yeah. VP of advisory, and he said he kept bringing it up. This is ridiculous. Other towns have a unified place. I mean, if we pooled all the vehicles together, I mean, that's how we ran a 300 or 400 car auto park, you know, 19 store auto park. I mean, there was, uh, you need to. He, he was trying to get this all together with right. the whole town. And our buses, the police vehicles, the highway department, we're just doing it a very uh, draining, uh, financially draining way. Well, I think. Yeah, that's something we've been talking about. Yeah, I mean, it, well, again, we've been trying to bring it up for yeah, like not, 10 years. <laughs> I would say, you know, if, if Peter had some more, a lot of voice your opinion. I mean, we know you weren't there last night. I didn't know what would happen or if I'd even get down there. But, you know, tomorrow night it will be brought to advisory as a recommendation. I'm sure if you wanted to address anything that you have in mind, whether, you know, the number of buses, the length, the maintenance, whatever, tomorrow night would be the time probably. Yeah, well, somebody can you know, yeah, say yeah, yeah, Buses weren't specifically on the agenda last night, so. Well, no, what they were doing is at the end, they debated all of, because it was the, the last thing, oh, and every projects. capital item, they deliberated as to what would be recommended. That part was on the agenda. So they were covering like eight <coughs> months worth of meetings, though, in one night. And we left at 11, and they were still charging along. They were not used to go. Yeah. So um, <laughs> they were grateful. But, I'm oh, sorry. Just one, you do the one on drive one road. Just one point to alleviate some of the concern because they are actually discussing an eight bus fleet, which I think was a big um, realization on their part that we operate six buses day in, day out. We have an athletics bus and we have a bus that is here as a backup. So they're talking about an eight bus fleet, which I think alleviates some of the concern about students getting stranded. Yeah. So that to me was yeah. a very big breakthrough yes. to have that conversation that we're an eight bus district. So I, I want to give credit where credit yeah, is right. due on that point because the issue about having people stranded or having a lemon gets alleviated some right. by eight buses, right? Yes. Um, instead of squeezing it down and well, then you get yourself in a trip. That answers the question. It, it, it does start off as a seven yeah. bus lease and then as the bus that is newest rolls out at three yeah. years, it picks up the eight bus yes. lease. So the first three years, it's a little tiny. But I, I think yeah. that, to me, that was a very yeah. same point. Okay. So we wanted the committee else? to know what was discussed last night. The other thing that was talked about was the technology. Um, Rob gave a very, very <laughs> lengthy presentation. I guess would be the best way at updating the committee on every single project he 
uh, has done thus far. I didn't actually have the documentation that they did out last night, but it wasn't like 10 pages. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, of how much has happened and the fact that everything that's in process will be done, I believe you said as of September 1st, 2014. And uh, because there were concerns, where's all the money going, what's been spent, and so forth. So that was all cleared up last night, and I guess all the line items were completed, it seemed. So uh, then the conversation went on to two things. One is the 21st century classroom, what's left to be done, and what monies need to be spent. And it seems that um, that we have some money that needs to be spent. I'm sure Katie does too. And they voted on those monies to make sure that the 21st century classrooms are completed at the middle and high schools, along with uh, <coughs> you know things like the document cameras and the LCD projectors and so on. <coughs> the other piece that they had to discuss was the one-to-one -one initiative. Uh, what Jack said, Jack Kniley said, is that he was tabling the one-to-one -one for the time being. I think he, he meant postpone in this instance, not virtually table, but uh, postpone the one-to-one, -one, but at the same time, he would allotted us and voted on $30,000 for me to hire a consultant that would help bring the group, I wanted to bring a group of people together, but bring the group of people together that would help organize this for six, you know, six through 12 or seven through 12, at the very least, and that we begin this in the spring after town meeting, obviously, because we uh, actually after July 1st, technically, for our monies, but we'd be able to begin some work in the spring on our own. And then carry over into the fall, and hopefully they're thinking of a special town meeting being able to allot a one-to-one -one initiative at that point. What would the $30,000 go to? It would go to a consultant to tell us, or to assist us with implementing a one-to-one -one initiative. It costs that much just to have a consultant? They originally they talked about a hundred thousand. They said that was too much money. We didn't need that much. Right. I think it's think of it more as a placeholder. Yeah. I think. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. It could wind up costing less, but they were kind enough to allot that. Amount. Would this consultant actually do some uh, like some trial runs with it? Well, actually, the consultant that we've asked, I've already called. Is the consultant that's already working with our teachers and doing the train the trainer model and allowing is it 14 teachers now are being certified? We started with 19 teachers going for certification of technology and education out of, out of the certification from Bridgewater State University. Uh, it is held here and online. We have teachers from every school, and right now we are into 14. Of the 14, I would think about eight of them have already done the next course that's being offered, so they're that far ahead. By September, all of them should be uh, certified as uh, train the trainer models. They should also serve as our board for looking at what do teachers need and what will they uh, best access in the classroom. And I know that uh, we were just talking about some of that is already coming through in some of the classes. Right. And in addition, the, this particular consultant has already come in and done a survey with all our teachers as to their breadth of knowledge and where we need to fill in some of the holes and where we have some strengths going on. So we have that in place already, so I felt it was advantageous if we're going to have a consultant not start all over, but use somebody that's already been working with us that folks really have a trust and a relationship with and moving forward. And how much did you ask? The they allotted us 30000 I know, but how much did you ask that he was going to be, um, put a, you know, like, for the iPad? It's $250,000. Yes. So for the iPads, I asked for 175 initially. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's what I wanted. Yeah. So that is what it will cost to institute this program yes. for um, how many grades? Seventh and eighth. For just two grades. Thank you. So I did want the committee to also know what was happening on that. And so that's the capital update. And then as far as the uh, fiscal 15 budget update, it's not a, a breakdown of what's been happening on the budget, but to let the committee know that we have been uh, requested to be at the advisory meeting on Tuesday, uh, April 8th, to defend our budget. So, and we will be there. But we want you to be aware that we've been asked. Uh, who, who's the spokesman there? Uh, well, we'll both Dave be there together. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have patients already. Yeah. Okay. But we want you to be aware of what's happening if somebody calls you up and says, but we saw, you know, the 
the superintendent and the business manager at the advisory meeting, and you're thinking, I didn't know there was one, or I didn't realize right, they were right, going. Right, we right. want you to be aware we're going. Okay. All right, so that was the last item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 FY15 yeah. budget update. That was oh, the budget that was it. Was to let you know that we're going to be before the this week. That's it. Okay. No, no details needed tonight. Home by 11. So that's for a... Uh, home by 11. Okay. That's not funny. <laughs> that's for a motion to approve uh, <coughs> warrant 14-18 CR. We'll make a motion to approve warrant 14-18 S. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Roll call vote, please. Aye, Gene Estino. Aye, Barry McGoldrick. Aye, Paul Lee Payne. Aye, Helene Lee. Aye, Paul Schubert. There are no notes. Stop that from the past. Um, <clears throat> so, under um, communications, I uh, mentioned that it is Autism Awareness, Awareness Month. Wearing blue. Wearing blue. It's the day show. Today. Uh, there was a CPEC meeting last night with uh, Carol uh, Gino, uh, founding director of Live Free of ADHD, and it was full with uh, nearly 40 people. Yeah. Big turnout. Um, May 6th, there's also um, an anxiety expert um, coming for the meeting. Yeah. 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 Um, and there were flowers that were sent out uh, around, around town, right? Yes. And the uh, autism awareness. Yeah. And uh, I think there's like blue bulbs out in town. There should be. There should be. When I dropped off over 70 flyers at all the businesses around town, um, the school fully um, um, got involved with the staff and um, students wearing blue. It's on the um, sign out front, too, which is great. Sign out front. <coughs> um, the library has. Their front ground desk has books on autism on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the town hall put our posters in the yard and window cranes. And so it was a great community wide kickoff for the month. Um, embrace and um, welcome to get you differences and their unique challenges. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Thank Just you. Today. Um, and the, the other thing I have to, to mention is the superintendent evaluation. We're trying to get that done before the uh, next election. Um, there's two meetings left, so we can do the next two meetings. Uh, we've got to call out to Roseanne to have the exact requirements because it's changed a little bit from last year. Um, it has to be reported to the state. Um, there's certain regulations and requirements and things like that. So, um, I haven't heard back from that, but that's one of the other things. Um, the other thing is the CF. Um, your party is coming up on uh, Friday, mm -hmm. next Friday. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, uh, if you haven't penciled in your dance card, <coughs> pencil it in. Um, and aside from the various meetings I've been to in the capital, the budget advisory group, the capital budget, um, I haven't done much. That's been enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been to the Board of Elder Affairs, the High School School Council, the marketing for the um, cafeterias. So I've been busy. And, you know, everything is going okay according to all the meetings that I've been to. And I just, to report. I just want to note that um, the class of 2014 is holding a fundraiser um, at Chipotle at Derby Shops. It's to benefit the class of 2014. It's on Tuesday, April 8th from 4 to 7 p.m. And if you go to Chipotle that night between those hours and tell them that you're there from Cohasset High School mm -hmm. or from the Cohasset School District, um, the town, will, the school district will get a portion um, oh. to put towards the class of 2014. So I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I think it will be very successful since it's 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 will. <laughs> the, the line is out the, out door, the door and it's all <coughs> oh, yes, out the door. Yeah. Out the door. Yeah. Don't yeah. get behind the yeah. yeah. player uh, hockey team. No, in London. We're they did that last time. They did this before? No, they yeah. haven't yeah. done it before. Yeah. But yeah. we tell it, the place is so popular. It's unbelievable. And at Derby Street Shops. Yes. 
Tuesday night I work. And we has, uh, well, you're right across the street. Yeah, but I don't you get can. a break. You can have somebody go pick you some, pick somebody up for you. The, um, <laughs> So, you know, so yeah, Selena and I had the, the negotiations, and we have another few more scheduled. That's the only union contract at this time. Yes. And I uh, did want to point out the Wax Museum at Deer Hill was uh, a great success. Yeah. Very exciting to see that in action. Great Cleopatra. And what a, what a great way to <laughs> what a great way to have a uh, to have a, a, a sort of a biographical <laughs> summary. You know, really, I've never I've never heard of that before, and it was much. More interesting than having someone do a biography another way. Well, I, mean, I, I would say for any parent that thought their child couldn't sit still for 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, for a half an hour they didn't blink. I thought I was in front of the, uh, the, the guards at the uh, palace in London there. No, we said to Dr. Tikira that she uh, should have it more often. It's probably the quietest school. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> Even the adults would talk as they were going back and forth. It was really like a museum. Can I also yep. just let the committee know that at our next meeting we will have an executive session okay. so you can plan accordingly. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, the other thing is the John Smith landing. Uh, the materials were given to me by the committee and uh, I gave them to Mrs. Demas and the principals are all going to be working on things for the schools. Uh, you might have read in a class Mariner, they're excited about the day, it's a big anniversary. We're going to be one of the first, because Plymouth follows us. We're 16, 14, and, and they're 16, 20, I believe. And so um, uh, the whole town will be involved, and the schools will have a major part. Uh, they're thinking of, and it's not going to be so much, they, they wanted for some essay contest, but we talked about, um, uh, about the having more of an essay presentation and uh, uh, other different ways to contribute besides essays. It could be artwork, it could be video presentations. And they'll probably involve the schools in terms of a reenactment. Uh, uh, Mrs. Demas also spoke about actually constructing, I think it, in one of the schools was Deer Hill, uh, I think the Deer Hill, uh, or one of the schools doing a wigwam, a big thing on the commons. So things are moving. The school console for the high school, uh, it was an informative meeting, we were just talking about all the different things that are going on. The uh, <coughs> senior center, if you went by Sawyer Street, it's definitely happening. Uh, the building should be completed uh, at the end of the year, that's the goal. And it's the first phase of the project, so we'll have about as much space as we have now working on things with a, a just be in one place. And then the next phase will be enable us to do things like a day day center and more activities and things like that. But the first phase should be completed by the end of the summer. Okay. Katie, do we have a lot of your black on um, Can I make one request um, for both advisory but also as kind of an ongoing protocol? Can we add enrollment updates to the mm. discussion? I think it's important that we begin to practice collecting the data from Osgood, Deer Hill, Middle School, High School, and figuring out what's going on month by month in the district. I think it's also a helpful thing for us to pull together. I know um, that Deer Hill has already seen in March um, a couple of new students based on purchase and sales. So I think that, as you know, some of this prong and so have the real estate signs, so I think it's important for us to begin to track it. So I'd ask that we just begin to engage in a conversation around enrollment updates and we can accumulate them. Um, I also think that it's important for advisory for us to bring um, not only the enrollment projections, but also a discussion of the history of the enrollment um, so that we have the great presentation that you did probably um, six or eight weeks ago in terms of information on how the enrollment has changed. And I think it's also helpful for them to understand <coughs> that what is in the budget for next year that only shows a 1% increase. Um, and that is a very conservative assumption so that if we were to experience a 2 or 3% increase like we've seen over the last couple of years, that that would mean more than 16 students coming into the district. Um, and I think we just should be prepared to be able to speak about that. Mm -hmm. okay. Makes sense to me. Yep. Okay. Anything else? No, no. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to adjourn the <laughs> I have a client just.
see my morning plan in about eight yeah, hours. Well, <laughs> uh, motion to uh, ask for a motion to return the April 2nd, 2014 school meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it okay. at 9 0. Well, my watch says 904. That says 907. So let's call it 905. <laughs> All sure. Aye. 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 Well, but I mean, the other thing from your perspective is, it's just a bit less of a